all right what's going on everybody this is chase fan number nine here and i'm coming at you with another video um i know it's been a while since like about um mid last month since i last did a race review but i'm gonna do one today the reason why i've been, been doing them lately is just i've just been busy with other things and it has nothing to do with how the race went just just didn't feel like doing any but um the races that I didn't do a review on, they've been pretty good. They've been pretty decent. For some of them, the winners weren't what I was hoping for, but they were still good races nonetheless. So, yeah. It, they, they were good. And so was this past weekend, Darlington. So, um, I might as well talk about that. Um, so, um, before I get into it, um, paint scheme preview for Darlington. To be honest with you guys, um, I've been busy this weekend, especially with Rail Fest that was happening here in Stockton. So, I wasn't able to do throwback, but I, I can still talk about them and give my, th my point of, well, my thoughts and opinions on um, each of the paint schemes. I can still do that. So, I'm just going to be honest with y'all on that. So, yeah. I also have my paint scheme previews from the previous weekend at Kansas all done. Um, I haven't been able to because my computer's acting weird, but um, when I restart the computer, I'll be able to do it, okay? So just bear with me. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's talk about Darlington, shall we? So um, this past weekend, the races were good. Um, nothing too terrible. Um, truck race was um, pretty crazy. Um, the first two stages were fine but the last stage however it, it was just a wreck fest i'm not gonna lie um there were several hard wrecks and some good paint schemes were well some good throwback paint schemes were wrecked in the end like that wreck with tanner gray akinori ogata and who was it timmy hill yeah that was a nasty one for sure um and then there was the big one on that one restart late in the race when Corey Heim and John Trenimacek got into each other on the restart and Corey Heim got jacked up by the truck behind him and it was just a freaking mess man um some of the GMS trucks um Spencer Davis who else Deegan etc well you guys saw what happened um Corey Heim Chandler Smith all had damage and I I think Crafton was in it too so yeah um yeah, that was crazy. Um, what else? Also, I was surprised none of the Thor Sport trucks didn't do a throwback either. Um, for those who follow me on Twitter, I, um, if I do recall, I did retweet um, a picture of a Matt Crafton truck from a long time ago before he was sponsored by Menards. And I thought that would have been a good throwback for him this year. But um, I guess he didn't want to do it. Maybe next year he'll do one. But anyhow, yeah, that wreck was crazy. And Derek Krause, I was hoping he would back up that um, second place last year with a good finish, let alone a win. But unfortunately, mechanical problems derailed his chances of doing so. Um, I mean, I'm neutral with Ben Rhodes, but I, I, it seemed that he was going to have the race won. But it turned out that Sheldon Creed was pretty much no match for him. Or should I say the late Jason Leffler, rest in peace. Um, on that last, that last, last restart, um, Creed was able to, like, what do you call it, like, side, what do you call it, well, not door slam, like, side draft him, and he was able to get the run on the high lane, and he was able to get some momentum off the corner and check out the field and hold everyone off for the win, so... Overall, it was a good win, and it was a good redemption win because we all know what happened last year. He was dominating the race. Late race caution comes out. He makes a pit stop, gets penalized, and that's the end of his race last year. And him getting redemption this year, it was a good thing to see. Also, another wreck I forgot to mention was the Parker Kligerman wreck. That was a nasty one. I forgot. Oh, yeah, Stuart Friesen. Um, he got into Stuart Friesen. I think Kligerman blew a tire, I think. He hit the wall hard off, too. He caught fire, and his race was done. Um, 
and overall yeah it was crazy and then on the last the race actually ended under caution because Deegan or should I say Ken Miles wrecked on the front stretch so that was unfortunate I think she finished the race but she had to crab walk it back but oh well and she was actually running in the top 10, I believe, at one point, too. So she was having a good run right up until the last stage. So, And if I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a John Hunter Nemechek type race because he was he was looking strong. And um, I thought it was going to be his race, but that late race crash kind of messed everything up for him. But yeah. And also, Timmy Hill, Jordan Anderson were some of the noble drivers that got tops in. So good for them on getting finishes so yeah um i did see some i did acknowledge well i'll admit the fact that there were times where nascar did throw unnecessary cautions for like solo spins and all that they could have just left it there let it go and not throw a caution but they did anyway i'm like i don't get it but anyhow, that's my take on the Xfinity on the truck race. Now the Xfinity race was was decent, um, but however, though there was a time where Ryan Vargas spun late and NASCAR threw, did throw an unnecessary caution for that. It did look like something that NASCAR would not take serious on as far as throwing a caution is concerned, but they did anyway. But whatever. Um, how do I just well um Almondinger led early and then Cindric led a good portion of the race. Um some of the junior motorsports guys, well, Noah Gregson look was looking strong and I thought it was gonna be his race, but there were some other circumstances that prevented him from doing so. It's also how the cautions fell and all that. I'm sorry if I don't remember everything, I'm not perfect. Um Towards the end there, Justin Allgaier came on strong late, and um, same with Josh Berry. I was pulling for Josh Berry because he was driving a Dale Jr. scheme, and you guys know Dale Jr. is my favorite driver, but looks like Allgaier was just too strong, and he managed to hold off. Well, it was the Dale Dale show at the end, and Allgaier was able to get the win for um, Junior Motorsport and for Dale, so that was really good to watch. Um, I hope... Um, junior motorsports can revive themselves this year because they I hope they need to get back on the right track and I I hope by the end of this year that I could see at least the rest of the JRM team get a win like Annette Gregson all that so yeah I'm I would love to see all the four the season complete with all four JRM cars in victory lane regardless of where they win so yeah it was it was pretty satisfying to watch and besides Algar if I do recall Algar almost won this race last year if I do recall but I could be wrong but nonetheless it was good to see him get his first win at Darlington and his second win of this season so I know lots of people will be satisfied will be happy about that I know Kamikaze Games is probably happy to see him win that race so overall it was a good race and a good win, so yeah. Um, Noah Gregson, I, if I do recall, he finished fourth, but then he had his win. I mean, <clears throat> well, he he thought he had won three consecutive dash for cash races, but unfortunately, he got DQ'd, and the prize money went to um, AJ Allmendinger. So unfortunate, but that's just how it goes, and that's what happens when you're caught cheating, folks never get caught cheating it's not good at least Alex LeBay got a top 10 and Jeremy Clements got a top five on his first not his first top five finish on a non super speedway race so that was a good deal for them so yeah anyways with that said let's go on to the cup race um the cup race was just was just a typical Darlington race. It was pretty calm, not as crazy as the last two. Um, two of the four SHR cars, Cole Custer and Al Marola wrecked out, unfortunately. Al Marola wrecked out um, early on lap eight or so. Um, 
And also Kurt Busch, he wrecked too, but he crashed on the front stretch and his car burst into flames. Um, his brother Kyle spun in turns three and four early on after a tire cut down. And he was a lap shy from leading his 18,000 lap, which was unfortunate for him, even though I don't like Kyle Busch. But anyhow, um, as Truex continued to lead throughout lead the pace throughout the race, it was pretty clear it was going to be a Martin Truex type day right up until the very end. Um, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick was looking strong. Um, Chase Elliott, he had speed, but I don't think his speed was anywhere close to what... Um, to what Martin Truex Jr. had. Um, Kyle Larson, he had race pace similar, close enough to what Truex had. And I'm going to tell you this right now, the final stage, for those who didn't notice, um, went caution free. Um, on the last pit cycle, Kyle Larson and Truex played strategy, and Larson was actually able to get close enough to Truex where he'd actually snatch the lead, but unfortunately he used up his... Um, his stuff, too much of his stuff, and he didn't have enough momentum to catch Truex. And Truex managed to hold him off, hold off Larson's late charge for his um, second win at Darlington. Um, I have nothing against Truex winning, really. I was just like, Larson was so close again. See, when a driver you like is in the position in second place in a position to win the race and they're that close to the lead you're like come on you're pulling for them but when they don't do it, you're just like oh no honestly it's just whatever i'm not gonna get too pissed about it. at least it wasn't kyle bush if you know what i'm saying but yeah hope larson can get in the southern 500 because i know he almost won that race one time 2018 what else um, Chase Elliott had a good run. Um, both of the Roush cars um, had good runs as well. Um, Brad Keselowski started on pole, but he dropped like a rock after he lost it. Um, Tyler Chase Briscoe actually finished 11. I think it's his best um, finish of his career so far in Cup. Um, hope he can make that a top 10 um run next time around but anyhow um yeah what else um for chase elliott um just i know there's some chase elliott fans who are like kind of like getting impatient on like when is he gonna win i mean i don't mind him getting um look i get it everyone wants to see him win i want to see him win too but just give him time i'm not i'm not, I'm not trying i'm not impatient um, give him until Coda. It's a road course. New, but still a road course. We all know how Chase Elliott is on road course, so he might win there. If not, he'll probably win Sonoma or the Coke 600 or whatever. Or maybe Dover, which is this upcoming weekend. So just wait until then, and then if he wins, then everything's all good. Um, so, yeah. And also Byron's top 10 streak continues. Um Last year, the complete that feat was, I think, Jeff Gordon back in 2010 or something. I think it was Jimmy Johnson, but I could be wrong. But anyhow, yeah. I know Kamikaze was probably nonetheless satisfied with Trix winning as well. So, yeah. But anyways, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about this past weekend. It, it was a good weekend. I just wish Sunday's Cup winner would have been a lot different. But anyhow, um, yeah, it was a good weekend. And also, don't forget to mention both Roush Fenway cars finished in the top 10 at Darlington in the Cup race too. So, good for them. But anyways, um, that's pretty much for this video. Please let me know what you think down below in the comments. And with that, I'll see you all this weekend for Dover. And until then, have a good one and stay safe, everybody. All right. Bye, everyone.